Well, another humid morning here at the Kia Oval. Day two, a uh, pretty good first day for Surrey yesterday. They'll start this morning 260 for six after being put in by Hampshire. And Tom Curran, three not out. Ben Folks, 47 not out. Yesterday, all about Rory Birds. Magnificent effort from him yesterday, making that 101 on a day that was pretty tough for the batsmen. So, second day, Surrey will be looking for 300, will be their first port of call and go on from there and then it will be interesting to see what the Surrey bowlers get on this second day. So, day two, and as always you'll miss none of the action, here on Surrey TV. Tom Alsop hit a maiden first class century as Hampshire put themselves in a good position at the end of day two against Surrey. Surrey began on day two on 260 for six in their first innings and not out batsmen Folks and Tom Curran initially found the going tough with Folks edging Berg just short of Irvine at first slip before Curran was given a lifeline when he was put down at second slip by Adams off McLaren. McLaren had his wicket shortly after though, producing a Jaffa to knock over Folks for 48. Batty joined Curran at the crease, but he too struggled early with McLaren's probing line. Curran's teammates would have been asking him for the lottery numbers as his luck continued with another regulation chance going down this time off the bowling of wheel. Batty started to find the middle of the bat and the boundary, but Curran's luck finally ran out on 17 when he was caught down the leg side attempting to hook wheel, McManus making no mistake with the gloves. Mika got off the mark in unconvincing fashion, but Batty, sensing he would soon run out of partners, went on the attack, taking consecutive boundaries off Andrew. Mika made just eight before he prodded a short ball from Wheel to Allsop, and Footit was the last man out in the next over, caught by McLaren off Dawson for a duck. It was about par for Surrey then in their first innings, with a card built around 101 from Burns on day one. Folks played a patient hand with 48 in the middle order, Batty contributing a valuable 41 at a runner ball lower down. Hampshire openers Smith and Adams successfully negotiated the four overs before lunch and Smith came out firing after the interval, taking a pair of boundaries off Tom Curran's first over. Adams, on the other hand, had made eight of 31 balls before he edged a Tom Curran delivery to Folks behind the stumps. That's as good as it got for Surrey in the middle session with new man Allsop joining Smith to bat through to tee. The sun came out at the oval and batting conditions greatly improved, allowing Smith and Allsop to play some expansive strokes as their partnership continued to build. Allsop went past 50 off just 58 balls as Hampshire completely dominated the afternoon session. Smith started positively in the evening, but he appeared to lose track of where his off stump was when attempting to leave one from Footit. Put it was encouraged to persist with his line and it paid off. Smith again uncertain of whether or not to leave and only succeeding in feathering an edge through to Folks as he went for 49. Vince came to the crease and he was living dangerously from the off, edging just short of slip when attempting to drive Mika. Vince made just four before he too fell victim to a ball angled across him from Footit. Folks with another catch. Allsop continued to press on, finding the boundary on both sides of the wicket. He was given a life though when Davis put down a tough chance at second slip off Mika. Irvine was Allsop's new partner and the pair looked solid in building a fourth wicket partnership. Allsop was given another life when he was sent back by Irvine after a diving stop from Sibley in the covers. A direct hit would have seen the Hampshire opener well short of his ground. Irvine and Allsop continued to pile on the runs, with Irvine sending Batty into the stands for a maximum. Surrey, however, were the architects of their own demise on day two, with yet another catch going down. Keeper Folks the culprit this time with a straightforward chance off Curran. Allsop brought his 100 up late in the day, a maiden first class ton for the 20 year old and a timely one too, with his side desperately needing a result in this match to keep alive their chances of remaining in Division 1 next season.
Irvine and Alsop remain not out at stumps, with Hampshire finishing the day well placed on 213 for three. Surrey still hold a 116 run first innings lead, but Hampshire will resume on day three with seven wickets still in hand.